Hello everyone, uh, so today I'd like to take a look at the newest dungeon that's available for testing on the Shadowlands Alpha, and that, my friends, is the Halls of Atonement uh, in Revendreth. Revendreth being the uh, newest zone that we can also test in the Shadowlands Alpha. Now, I have been super lucky. Uh, I'm actually in the Alpha, and I've been able to play these firsthand. Not only have I been super lucky enough to play this dungeon, but I've also been lucky enough to stream it over on Twitch.tv slash Online. So if you haven't checked out the channel, go do that. It really helps me out. Thanks, guys. Uh, in fact, I've actually tried to run Halls of Atonement now like three times. The first time was a shit show. The second time was a shit show. But the third time was not a shit show because Taliesin was there, obviously. Uh, so, spoilers here, I, I really want to talk about the story of the dungeon before we actually jump into it. So, during your questing in Revendreth, you'll be helping the master, Sire Denathrius, the first, uh, the first of his kind, right? The Dracula, if you will. Uh, and more directly, you'll be helping the guy that meets you as soon as you get into Revendreth, which is Lord Chamberlain, a Venthyr that's very loyal to the master. And you'll help remove the accuser. The accuser is the leader of uh, this rebel group that's formed against the master led by Prince Renethal. And you'll remove her with the help of Lord Chamberlain, uh, this gargoyle general, Echelon. Uh, you'll remove her from her seat of power at the Halls of Atonement. And then in true Warcraft fashion, you find out that you have been working for the wrong side and that the accuser is actually one of the good guys. Uh, so you end up joining the Accuser, and of course, uh, things happen, and you need to retake the Halls of Atonement back from the guy that you just gave it to, uh, which gets us into the, f the the dungeon, the first dungeon that we can test in Revendreth. Uh, so I wanna I wanna talk about like my experience of this dungeon and 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 walking into it. Uh, so the first time that you walk into this place, it is a giant courtyard littered with enemies. There's trash mobs everywhere and then in the distance is this big looming cathedral that obviously is where we need to go that's the halls of atonement uh, we've actually been there uh before because in the quest we remove uh the accuser from th her seat which is actually where we end up fighting lord chamberlain too so uh when you walk in all of this trash what's really neat about this though is you don't have to do 98% of it. Uh, there are probably, I would say, maybe eight to nine trash packs that you have to do before the first boss. Uh, and it's 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 great, actually. Uh, the, the way that this is designed, um, I guess it's important to mention that <laughs> right when you walk in, you get a bar above your head, uh, above on your UI somewhere, um, the Halkia's Anima. Halkia being a Sinstone Golem, it's the first boss that you fight, and you have to fill up his Anima so that it will come to life, and then you can beat it, and the gates will open for you into uh, further into the Halls of Atonement. So there are three shards of Halkia's that you have to kill. That's it. As long as you can kill the trash leading up to those shards and kill those shards, you get the boss. The boss is in the center of the courtyard, and you can walk over and kill it. Some notable mods, uh, mobs that you end up fighting are the shards themselves as they cast an unavoidable AoE called Thrash that just does a bunch of group-wide damage. Um, and then there are these Venthyr casters. Those are the most popular enemies. You'll see them all the time. Uh, they just need to be interrupted. They have a single target. They have a Curse of Obliteration, which is a uh, like a big AoE that they put on someone. I believe it needs to be soaked uh, from what I can understand from testing. Um, but the real enemy here, the real trash mob tanks that you're going to want to watch out for is the horrifying uh, Gargans. These things are potentially overtuned on Alpha. They enrage, they stack a bleed effect, and they hit like absolute trucks. Uh, if you can kite these though, luckily we had some frost mages in our group, you'll be just fine, I promise. Uh, now, with the anima fields, after you've taken care of all of the shards, there's three of them. You'll finally be able to first uh, face the first boss, which is the Sin Golem Halkius. Super, super easy fight. You just have to make sure that you have plenty of room. So in this big courtyard, there will be a couple packs. Uh, I just kill the two guarding the gate because we have to go that way anyways. And then I kill the guys in the center. And that typically is enough room to uh, to kill Halkius. I've done it three times now. And each time, that's totally more than enough room. Uh, but... The reason why you want so much room is because, one, the boss is going to smash the ground on the tank, uh, which will have these glass shards appear, uh, and you can't walk over that or else you'll take damage. Uh, but it'll also throw stuff at the 
other players, right, that aren't tanks, and that will also leave glass on the ground. So you already have that area of denial. But then the uh, the the boss will also cast a fear on a random party member, um, and that will make them potentially either run through the glass or run into a pack of mobs. Uh, so you want to make sure that that's not a problem. You want to make sure your DPS is lined up. Super easy to deal with. Uh, and then finally, the golem's last move. Uh, really, that's it. That's all it does. Um, it will squat down and it'll channel four beams uh, that you don't want to get hit by. They'll rotate. The first time it rotates counterclockwise and the second time it rotates clockwise. Uh, it, it actually shifts during its one attack, right? It's so easy to avoid. It does a ton of damage, but it rotates really, really slowly. Um, I actually think that this fight might be a little too easy, or the later ones that we get into are just a little too hard. Um, all of the mechanics are really, really easy to avoid. They don't do that much damage. It's essentially just a big rock that you attack, which I suppose is fine. It's a leveling. Right now, it's a currently, you know, normal mode. Um, I didn't see anything really that, uh, that any heroic or mythic stuff in the adventure journal. It doesn't look like there's any new mechanics added. Of course, it is super early alpha, so that could change, right? Um, I think... It might need a little bit more done to it. But I guess the more health it has, then the, the more area denial that ends up happening, right? So potentially, potentially it, it, that that could be the big thing, right? If you just, you, you can't move, so you die because of the beams. That, that, okay. So after you defeat the golem, uh, the gates unlock and open up into a, uh, like a funneled, a smaller courtyard. So think of it like a triangle. You start at the base and then it gets smaller as you get into where the actual cathedral is. And this smaller, smaller courtyard is home to, uh, not Venthyr, but the big stone form enemies that you've seen throughout your questing in Revendreth, the big gargoyle looking dudes, which, uh, by the way, please make them playable, Blizz, please, please, I'll get, uh, dude, look, listen, I'll give you anything you want, uh, dude, I'll give you my firstborn, fine, take, I don't even love it. Can you just please give me these gargoyles? They are literally my favorite designs uh, in World of War. I love them so much. Uh, it, it's the Disney show. They are... They, I, I just want to scream for Goliath every time. Anyways, the point is, these mobs are fun. <laughs> uh, one of them will punt the tank, uh, which will do like this big knockback. You want to make sure that you don't hit any other mobs. Some of them will turn you to stone, which will stun you, and also they reduce damage. Uh, and others will just, these tiny little ones will just leap around and stun people for like super small one second intervals, uh, which can get annoying if you pull too many, but it's so, it's, they're cute. Uh, it's fun. You can do this whole part though in like three pulls. Again, there are so many enemies here, but you can do it in about three to four pulls. And they all do something that's super cool. And obviously this is going to change in a Mythic Plus situation. And I'm really curious how how much it actually does. Because obviously you need 100% enemy forces, right? So I think we're going to see people spending a lot more time out in the courtyard. Uh, because there isn't much trash. Once you get into the cathedral, there is very little trash. So you're going to have to probably make it up in the actual courtyards. So once you clear the trash up to the steps, uh, right at the entryway of the Halls of Atonement, the actual cathedral, you have to deal with the second boss. This is the Gargoyle General I was talking about. This is Echelon. Uh, he is, first of all, looks amazing. Um, but dude, this guy, this, oh, this guy. Uh, listen, I watched Mr. GM cry his eyes out. He hates him that much. Mr. GM was blubbering. It was embarrassing. Okay, but seriously, the boss is uh, just way too overtuned right now. I've heard a lot of people suggesting that there's just too many mechanics, but I really, really don't feel that way. Um, at its core, this fight, this entire fight is a, a spread and stack fight. That's it. Uh, spreading at the wrong time is going to lead to death, and stacking at the wrong time is really going to lead to death. The adds that are summoned by this boss are a bit too frequent on alpha, and they do too much damage once they turn to stone. And because of how much damage they do when they turn to stone, uh, you would think that you would have to kill them a little slowly, like counter them. But because the second wave comes so quickly, you can't really do that. And they have such little health that even your natural cleave is going to take these things down. It's it's super tricky to get one down at a time. And this again, the second wave is going to be out there so fast. You just can't methodically deal with these adds one at a time. Uh, no doubt this is going to be tuned eventually. And Mr. GM will finally be able to kill this boss. Uh, and finally, once he does die, if he does die, you gain entrance to this cathedral. And guys, I am not joking when I say that it is 
absolutely stunning. It is so cool. Uh, when you first walk in, it's a little bit bigger of a room, like a lobby. Uh, and you'll have to deal with casters and some gargans. Uh, with those fucking gargans. Um, and overlooking them... Or, or then you walk into the next room and there's some more casters. But overlooking them is the third boss, the Adjudicator. Very little trash to deal with here. And then it's just it's just the third boss. Third boss is a bit lacking uh, in comparison to the second boss. It feels like you ramped up uh, in this, like, the first one, the first boss, you did this thing. It was like, okay, I learned. The second boss, it's like, whoa, whoa, let's go. And then the third boss is like, okay, you can relax again. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the first boss of Underrod a little bit. She has some casts that you need to interrupt. She has this blood pool, that anima pool uh, that will come out. You just have to get out of it. Um, but then she has the, the cool mechanic, um, which are these invul invulnerable parish parishioners, par par ghosts. Uh, that will spawn and they'll fixate on somebody. Um, and they do mechanics, according to the dungeon journal, like being immune to damage uh, and channeling an effect. They are immune to damage, of course. Uh, but uh, supposedly they can also channel an effect that does AoE damage. Uh, I didn't notice any of these mechanics working. And if they were working, I they weren't noticeable, right? Um, you need to bring these ads to these anima vessels. There's six of them, I believe, uh, on each side, or three on each side of the boss, so six in total. You need to bring these ads to the vessels, and that will seal the vessel, get rid of the vessel, and get rid of the ad. Um, the dungeon journal also says that these ads, once they're fixated on you, if the person that's fixated is looking at them, they'll stop moving, which is bad. You don't want that to happen because you want them to go into the vessel and get out as soon as possible. But that also didn't really seem to be working to me, or people were just playing perfectly without knowing the mechanics. Um, so, potentially, the theme of this is really cool, right? The theme of all of this is, is super fun. Uh, it just didn't feel... The fight felt very, very easy. Uh, of course, I was looking at this as a tank perspective. The tank barely moved, right? Uh, uh, except for if I potentially had one of these parishioners on me or, or anything like that. Uh, that's, that's the fight. But after that, you get into what I would consider my favorite trash, uh, in this entire dungeon. And a lot of that comes down to theme. Um, so you walk into the next room and it's, uh, like a sermon hall, right? Where there is a bunch of pews and there is an inquisitor guy that is giving a sermon to all of these tormented souls that are in the pews. Uh, so naturally I pulled the only guy that was hostile to me, which is the, the inquisitor. And, uh, and that was, that was that, right? I pulled him and we took him down to health and then he channeled some blood thing and took all of the anima from all of the ghosts that were in the, in the pews and healed himself back up to full without barely touching the tormented souls. Like they took no damage at all. So we realized that we had to kill all of the souls to, to, so this guy couldn't heal himself back up. I know that sounds like really, really simple, but it was fun to learn that. And also the theme of that room makes it so much cooler. Uh, it was it was awesome. You have like these big stained glass windows while you're doing all this. It just it, I don't know. I know mechanically that's not hard, but thematically I loved it so much. Right after you kill the Inquisitor, that is the last trash in the entire dungeon. Uh, that you are forced to face. Uh, you enter onto the balcony where you fought the accuser during the leveling zone, and you face off against Lord Chamberlain himself, the Venthyr, the the right hand man of of Sire Denothrius. Uh, and also, <laughs> this Venthyr is essentially a Sith Lord. Uh, I'm not even joking. You fight a Sith who uses the Force to toss Sinstone statues across the room at people. He's actually using Anima, uh, but it literally feels like you're fighting a Sith, uh, and it's like, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, he pulls these statues into him and then sends them sprawling across the balcony, which hits anybody, right, if the statues hit you. Basically, he doesn't directly attack you. He uses these statues that he moves tele telekinetically to actually attack people, and it's awesome. Uh, occasionally, he'll also cast a stigma that does a bunch of damage at first, and I believe it degrades as it goes. Uh, and then he has uh, another one where Ritual of Woe, I believe, it's called where he channels these anima bolts into a statue uh, and that redirects from the statue out to everybody in your party 
But if someone is standing in between him and the statue, uh, you, you just that one person just takes a little bit of damage, and it's no big deal. Uh, and it's not much either. Like throw a hot on them, and they'll be just fine. Um, super, super easy fight. So Blizzard, if you want to give him a lightsaber or something, I'm not. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to argue with you. I, you just go and go ahead and do it. Um, really, though, his mechanics are very straightforward and very telegraphed. You always know what he's doing and when, and that's cool. If you die on this boss, it's because you didn't do the mechanics. Simple as that. You got hit by statues. I mean, these are big statues getting chucked at you across a room. Uh, you have to respond to that, and I love that. It's not super hard. It's not. It's it's just do the do the fight, and you win. Uh, which is which is a little different than the other one. It, it felt like maybe the other one just wasn't really working uh, as intended. Overall, I really really enjoyed this dungeon, guys. Like. A lot. Uh, it beats out every BFA dungeon for me, and I really like the BFA dungeons. Uh, minus Temple of Sethrilis, not a fan. Uh, <laughs> almost all of the trash felt really, really fun, and like it actually did something important, and you had to deal with it in some way, which makes me less uh, concerned about the AoE cap, because honestly, I, I don't know right now if, if the group's... I don't think you'd be able to pull that much, honestly. I think the, the ads are, maybe if you're like a super high-end, you know, awesome player, um, you'd be able to pull more. But for us, like, you would pull your pack that was no more than three to four mobs, and, and that was pretty much it, because you had to deal with everything, right? And they all had something that they did that was really cool, and I love that. Um, less trash, but more impactful, right? That That's super fun to me. Right now, uh, the second boss is obviously ridiculously hard compared to everything else in here. And the first and third boss are very simple fights. Uh, the final fight, though, is very thematic. Even if it's a little easier, it's very thematic. It's got super well-telegraphed mechanics. Uh, it, it doesn't really feel like it ramps up over time, which might be an issue. Uh, but overall, I really, really liked the last fight, even if, I, if it was a little easier. Again, this is a normal mode dungeon, super early alpha. Uh, we're on template character like we don't really know what this is going to be like on not our characters you know what i'm saying um i like the echelon fight though i can't i can't stress that enough i really do like the fight i don't think it needs any mechanics removed uh but it definitely needs some tuning right now so that it can be adequately tested um I, my guess is that there's a lot of people that haven't actually defeated echelon and gotten past him to the the final two bosses of the dungeon just because he really is that rough um you need you need a group that that is is kind of coordinated and knows what they're doing and that's just on a normal mode dungeon at level 57. so for some people that are, might be testing alpha they might not want to spend that much time on the second boss and even if they do get it down and they progress and they kill the final two bosses which you'll easily be able to do if you've killed the gargoyle boss um even if they do do that, they might not want to come back for more testing, right? Because it was so difficult the first time that it kind of turned them off to it. So, uh, I, I it, it definitely needs some tuning. Okay, so the last thing I'll say about the Halls of Atonement is that if this dungeon is a sign of things to come with the remaining six dungeons that we're getting in, in uh, Shadowlands launch, uh, or, or remaining seven, um, Necrotic Wake we've already seen is very good as well. But... Um, if, it, if the other six that we haven't seen yet, if those are going to be like that, like setup wise, and uh, the Castle Nathria raid is anything like aesthetically and thematically like Halls of Atonement, guys, I honest, I, I'm so excited for 9.0. Like the actual PVE content in this game is going to be beautiful and fun, uh, and I'm I'm. Dude, I'm I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see what ends up happening, especially with Castle Nathria. Halls of Atonement was like a beautiful taste of the Venthyr architecture and like what they what they do and what their culture is and what their themes are, right? I cannot wait to uh to fight some more Sith Lords in Castle Nathria. Uh so that'll be it for me and my overview, overlook, review, uh experience. I don't know what the hell this is. Uh with Halls of Atonement. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you over on twitch.tv slash missile online and uh and uh, I appreciate I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much and remember never give up, never surrender. Goodbye everyone. Yeah, after method party party. So I tried I tried doing that, but um everyone was tired and wanted to go to bed. People so. are old, sorry. I noticed. I noticed. <laughs>